This is Mrs. O'Neill for AP Chemistry, Chapter 6, Section 5, Quantum Mechanics and Atomic Orbitals. So first you should have watched the introductory lesson on quantum mechanical model. And here are my notes. So the current model of the atom is a little different than what you probably learned in middle school or the Bohr atom. So right now that Bohr atom just kind of said we have a nucleus and we have these rings uh, or shells around the nucleus where those electrons and they orbit around the nucleus. But there's a lot of uncertainty in those electrons. Really, is that what they're doing? They're just circling the nucleus? And then there's this quantum mechanical model and goes into a little depth or a little bit more probability as to where each of those electrons most likely will be. So he also talked about Coulomb's law and he talked about how Coulomb's law is the interactions between the protons and electrons in an atom and he gave you this nice little flow chart. So these electrons, they have uncertainty. Why? Because really, where is their exact location and how fast are they moving? So remember, they live in clouds, those that a big electron cloud of probability. And we want to remember that they're not orbits. They're not orbiting the nucleus, but they're orbitals. These electrons live in orbitals and they have a spin because they're moving. And they had to change the model to fit this new data that was discovered. So again, Coulomb's law gives us a little bit more indication as to where those electrons uh, are going to be. And we want to remember that the larger the charges get, the amount of electrons and protons, as that increases, the larger the force holding them together gets. But we also want to remember that as the radius increases, that force actually decreases. So again, there's going to be an amount of uncertainty. And we also have to talk about how many electrons and protons an atom has. And then he went into the shapes, the s orbitals, the p orbitals, the d orbitals, and the f orbitals. And as of now, you just need to know that there are those four shapes that are uh, occurring. And then he dealt more uh, or talked a little bit about the quantum numbers, um, the size, the shape, the orientation, and the spin. And they're, they're given these quantum numbers, and then they're given values. So again, where are these, what do these atoms look like and how do they interact? And he talked about machines uh, where you could predict where you could find them. So back to your chapter uh, notes, uh, the objectives are to describe how an electron exists in the atoms by treating them as a standing wave. So now again, we're going to look at them as wave functions and not just as a particle. So mathematically, there is a way to uh, understand the location or the position of that electron and how much energy it has and what orbital it's in. And of course, there's a shorthand called quantum numbers, uh, which we're not going to go into too much detail. You just need to understand what those four quantum numbers uh, relate to. So here's our Schrodinger guy, um, and so at this point, uh, I would suggest, again, pausing the video, fill in the blanks, and then listen to hear my words. So you want to understand that this wave equation incorporates how this electron uh, is both wavelength and particle-like. So now we have both, all right? So first we learned how electron is particle, then we learned a little bit how electron is wave, and now he's really combining the two in what's called quantum mechanics. Um, so this really uh, requires advanced calculus, which we're not going to worry about as far as the actual equation itself, but we just want to understand how it's both. So waves in a vibrating string, uh, like a stringed instrument, so if you pluck it, uh, you know, it's going to start moving. So it depends on how hard you pluck or how high up you pluck it. Uh, it's going to give you different fundamental first overtone or second overtone ways of that uh, wave, how it's working. So again, if we have N energy level one, it's just kind of go back and forth, right? Or energy level two, you're going to have more things going on. Energy three, you're going to have more things going on. Uh, so the more energy levels you have, of course, the more, um, more complex that atom is going to become. So what's possible? Well, you can only have a standing wave if you have complete waves. So if you go back to this, right, it's up and down. Again, what is a wave? A wave is from uh, one peak to another peak, right, a wavelength. Uh, so we want to remember uh, that these can only be standing wave if you have a complete waves. So they're only allowed a certain amount of waves. 
and in the atom there are certain um, allowed waves called these electrons, right? So now we're changing that wave again because remember that electron can also be a wave and now we're calling it um, an electron. That wave is an electron. So there's lots of math, but what's important are the solutions, like how they use the equation, they use the mathematics, they use that calculus, uh, but what did that information really give us? Well, that information or that equation gives us the fact that electrons are in orbitals uh, in energy levels, not orbits around the nucleus. They don't just kind of go around uh, the nucleus like the Earth goes around the sun, okay? So that's why they're called energy levels, because these electrons have so much energy, and the amount of energy is going to determine what orbital it's in. So what is this wave function? Nothing really. It's not possible to visually uh, map it out. So again, just read over this information. Um, it, it's not that pertinent. So here's the probability and, and where those electrons are uh, from distance uh, from the nucleus. So this is the graph that I really like. So we have the nucleus right here, and we have energy levels kind of coming down. Uh, so where is that electron going to be most of the time? And again, we want to think of probability. Most likely that one electron or, no, or electron number two or electron number three is going to be this distance from the nucleus. But notice, right, that electron can be any anywhere under this graph at any given moment is just going to hang out what we call the ground state most likely in that area or in that distance from the nucleus. So again that probability there's a 90 percent chance of where that electron is going to be found and again most of the time. So these quantum numbers uh, are labeled as the principal quantum number, the angular momentum quantum number, and the magnetic quantum number. So the first one is the principal designated or symbolization of N because it represents the energy level. Again, integers 1, 2, 3, and so on. The angular, angular momentum quantum number symbol is L, and this just gives us our shape. Now again, don't go crazy about the integers, um, but just know that there are four different shapes, and yes, they have a value to them. And the magnetic quantum number is M uh, sub uh, L. Uh, it's really just the orientation. Again, is it going um, up or is it going down in that orbital? Um, so here are the uh, values. Again, don't go nuts over the values. If you learn them in Chem 1, great. If not, no big deal. We just want to remember that there's energy levels, there's the shapes, and of course there's going to be the orbitals. Uh, and then the last thing is spin. So read over this and see if you come up with the answer. Hopefully you understand the difference between orbit versus orbital. So again, this is where the orbitals come into play, right? So we have energy level one, there's one orbital, and in that one orbital we can have a possibility of two electrons. And we're going to show an arrow up and an arrow down. And we'll get to that in a minute as far uh, in one of those sections um, as far as how do we fill that. And remember again that this is energy, okay? This is the amount of energy. Energy always goes up, right? Increasing energy. Notice um, uh, here's energy level one, and notice how much energy it takes to get to energy level two but then to energy level three, not so much. So sometimes this is represented uh, more accurately than just energy level one, energy level two, energy level three, energy level four in the same kind of um, uh, range. Uh, so this is a little bit better of a picture uh, as far as that concern. Uh, but we want to understand too that in uh, energy level one, there's only one orbital. In energy level two, the S has one orbital, but the P has three. In energy level three, we have three uh, subshells or three shapes available. So we have the S, which would have two electrons, the P six, and then the D uh, five. So uh, we want to, uh, you know, remember that information as well. So maybe try that on a, a little sibling or, or somebody uh, younger. Okay, see you in class.